Long before a ball is even kicked in the tournament, the World Cup creates some of the most emotional, exhilarating and unbelievable moments through its various qualification campaigns across the world. Beginning three years before the tournament proper, the qualifiers involve more than 200 nations competing in more than 800 games that bring countries to a standstill. What follows is just one of the stories featured in our upcoming World Cup 2018 book. On the 8th of October 2005, the fallout from one match went way beyond what anyone could have foreseen. The Ivory Coast travelled to Sudan for a crucial qualifier as they looked to secure their place at their first World Cup. But while the team was on the brink of history, the country itself was entrenched in civil war. By the time the night was over, the course of a nation's history would be changed forever, thanks largely to the actions of one man, Didier Drogba. Addressing your country's president live on TV and pleading for an end to a conflict isn't something most people could even comprehend doing, let alone actually follow through with it. But even before establishing himself as a bona fide legend of African football, it was clear that Drogba had the power to transcend the game itself and move into the realm of something greater. In England, he's remembered as an exceptional direct centre forward and a man who always turned up on the big occasions, even if he attracted criticism for his on-pitch histrionics at times. But back home in the Ivory Coast, he's considered a god, not only for his achievements on the pitch, but his common touch and the way he's consistently given back to his country and fought for peace. With the Ivory Coast split along ethnic, religious and regional lines, the conflict that began in 2002 had left thousands dead and over a million displaced. Tension was brewing ahead of the upcoming national elections. The prospect of further pain and bloodshed was a very real one. Managing to put the situation at home aside for 90 minutes, the Ivory Coast beat Sudan 3-1 to seal their place at Germany 2006. The celebrations in the dressing room were wild, and sensing an opportunity, Captain Cyril Domero invited the media inside. He then grabbed the microphone and handed it to Drogba, the star of the team, national poster boy. Drogba found the first camera, stared down it, and pleaded. Ivoirien, Ivoirien, du nord et du sud, du central ouest. Vous avez vu, on vous a prouvé aujourd'hui que Toute la Côte d'Ivoire peut cohabiter, peut jouer ensemble pour un même objectif. Qualifier pour le, se qualifier pour le mondial. Vous nous avez promis que cette fête allait rassembler le peuple. Aujourd'hui, on vous demande, s'il vous plaît, on se met à genoux. Then Drogba and his teammates now in unison on the floor, arms wrapped around each other's shoulders. Pardonnez. 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 Le seul pays, le seul pays de l'Afrique qui a toutes ses richesses ne peut pas sombrer dans la guerre comme ça. S'il vous plaît, déposez tous les armes. Faites les élections, organisez les élections et tout ira du mieux. And Drogba and his teammates stood, smiled and began to sing. On veut s'amuser. Arrêtez vos fusilades. The elections took place without any bloodshed. And by the time Les Elephants lined up for their first ever World Cup match in the summer of 2006, the civil war had ended. The role Drogba's speech played in uniting warring factions and a country riding the crest of a footballing wave was beyond doubt. The striker was also a key part in ensuring that an African Nations Cup qualifier against Madagascar was played in the ex-rebel stronghold of Bouake, rather than the capital of Abidjan. Drogba described the occasion, which saw opposing leaders from the Muslim North and Christian South sing the Ivorian national anthem together as like seeing the Ivory Coast born again. The road to long-lasting peace has not been an easy one, and war broke out again in 2011. But Drogba's efforts have contributed hugely to the country's great strides towards becoming a stable, democratic society. And for all his incredible success on the pitch, that remains his greatest achievement.